Hello Vikings, this is Miss Hames. I'm going to be going through the study guide with you to help you prepare for the physics test. So this is going to be episode 27. Alright, so you should have gotten your study guide already. And so let's take a look. Um, you can pause this, of course, anytime. Most of this stuff we've definitely already gone over, but let's just take a look here. All right, it says, what is a force? It says, the force is a push or pull um, exerted on an object. And examples would be gravity, somebody pulling something, somebody pushing something. Okay. Number two, what are balanced forces? Balanced forces are equal on all sides, and they do not change the object's motion or the position of the object. And here we've got this little picture, and you can see that there's force on both sides, so the forces are equal. Um, what are unbalanced forces? Number three, and it's when forces are not equal, and so it does cause a change in the position of the object. The object does move, and so you've got some examples. Winning a tug-of-war game, somebody pushing somebody in the picture. It's somebody pushing this little car. All right, number four, how does mass affect force? This was, <clears throat> excuse me, one of our just the facts. The greater the mass, the greater the object's force. All right, and um, the greater the force, the greater the amount of movement. All right, number five says, what are three things that can happen when an object is affected by a force? Well, that object could speed up, it could slow down, or it could change direction. Um, I'm recording this at home. I think you just heard my dog bark in the background if you think you heard that. but Anyway, number six, how is force affected when a simple machine is used? Well, it says it affects the force we need to apply to the task. Um, what does that mean? Well, we pull down on a pulley. It makes it easier to lift. So basically, when we use a simple machine, it causes us to use less effort on our part because the machine increases the um, effort given. All right, remember pause this if you need to if you haven't written this down. I'm going to move on. Uh, number seven, what's a pulley and how is it used? Um, the main thing, and this was in the Just the Facts, it changes the direction of the force we apply or the applied force. Whether than pulling up, we pull down. So it makes it easier. So an example would be a pulley that helps us lift things like lifting a flag up on a flagpole, um, lowering the blinds, and uh, then here's a picture here. You should have it in your Just the Facts as well. Number eight, another simple machine. What is an inclined plane and why is it used? It's a slanted surface used to raise an object. When an object is moved up an inclined plane, less effort is needed than if you were to lift it straight up but you must move the object over greater distance and really like the video showed you you are using the same amount of effort but you are spreading it out over a distance so you don't have to give the effort all at once it's um, spread out so it does not seem as if you're having to give as much effort so it seems like less effort is needed Less effort is needed at any one time. Um, totally, you end up giving the same, but it's spread out over time. Instead of just lifting something straight up, you are gradually lifting it up the ramp. Okay. Number nine, what is potential energy? Well, we've certainly talked about that. Energy of position or stored energy? Energy of position, think about if you're holding something up, um, you know, or the roller coaster at the top of the hill, it's based on its position that it's up and gravity is ready to pull it down. Or stored energy, it has it inside it, okay? It's ready to go. Like the stretch rubber band, the stacked dominoes, or charged battery. Those are the examples. All right, what is kinetic energy? Oops, I hope that my highlighter here isn't blocking it out. I guess you can just um, erase that if you need to, but. Um, kinetic energy, it's the energy of motion, energy of motion, like a flying rubber band or the dama's falling or driving a car. All right, number 11, 
Um, give an example of an object continually changing or transforming from kinetic to potential. And we usually talk about a roller coaster, right? It's potential energy at the top of the hill, and then it's kinetic as it's actually moving, going down the hills. All right, number 12. Um, give an example of an object gaining potential energy. Um, stretching a rubber band. The more you stretch it, the more potential energy is gained. A roller coaster getting to the top of the highest hill. Um, the higher something is, the greater the potential energy because there is more room for gravity to pull it down towards the earth. Okay, so the highest hill or just lifting up something higher. Okay, my dog is sitting in my lap, so if you hear noises, it's my dog. All right. Um, 13 says, what is motion? A, the change in location of an object, right? Something was over here, and now it's over here. Well, it moved, right? Um, motion is just the change in location. Remember, you can pause it if you need to. All right, explain this statement. An object at rest stays at rest, and an object in motion stays in motion unless acted upon by an outside force. That's Newton's first law, and it is what inertia is. It's the law of inertia, and it means it's going to stay in the same place unless something um, intervenes. Okay, now my dog is barking. Sorry about that. Or an object is going to keep moving unless something comes to do something about it. Um, lots of examples we've talked about, uh, you know, ball's going to be rolling until gravity and friction cause it to stop, um, wear your seatbelt so you become part of the car so that you'll stop when it stops, otherwise you're going to keep going because you're going to be an object in motion. All right, 15, explain how to calculate speed and give an example. All right, the formula for speed is distance divided by time. And this here says distance traveled divided by time passed. Same thing. So a car that's going 60 kilometers in one hour, um, what's the speed of that? Well, you have 60 kilometers divided by the one hour, and you have 60 kilometers per hour. Right, that's how you get speed. Distance divided by time. 16. How do you calculate average speed from a graph? Okay. So average speed is going to be the total distance traveled divided by the total time. So if you're looking at a chart and um, the person has gone 16 miles total, you know, even though they didn't go all those miles all at the, you know, same rate or the same pace to get the average time, you're going to look the total total distance, so 16 miles, and let's say the total time that that took was 2 hours. So that's going to be 16 miles divided by 2 hours, so that is going to be 8 miles per hour, right? 8 miles per hour. Alright, I'm going to erase those in case you need to be copying this other stuff. Um, so that's how you would get the average speed, is the total distance divided by the total time. All right, uh, 17, explain what a graph would look like for a car in constant motion. Basically, you need to remember that it is a straight line. Okay, so if you're looking at a graph, if it's, uh, hold on, let me, if it's constant, we're looking at constant motion, it is going to be a straight line. It might be horizontal, it might be up, it might be down, but it's going to be straight, okay? Um all the way through the graph, okay? Um, that would be constant motion because the rate does not change, so it is straight. Let me get rid of those. Uh, 18 says, explain what a graph would look like a um, student that's walking at different speeds. Well, it says two or more straight lines with different slopes. So, um, whoops, sorry about that. So let's say that someone is walking this is kind of slow, and then they speed up, it's going to go, then maybe they slow back down again. Okay, so that's different speeds, okay? Um, there are two or more straight lines, but at different slopes. So what I drew, that's, that's what that would look like. Okay. All right. 19. Describe three ways you can tell the motion of an object is changing by looking at the motion um, graph. Well, if the line slopes up, or the line slopes down, 
or it stops and goes parallel to the x-axis, or it's a horizontal line, which means no motion. Okay. Um, if you have questions about this, you can go back and watch the Just the Facts on uh, graphing speed, because I talk a lot about it. It's about 12 minutes long. So, All right, 20. Describe two types of constant motion that can be represented on a motion graph. Okay, constant motion. Basically, a straight line. It can be straight going up, it can be straight coming down, or this way. Of course, this way, the horizontal line that I just drew here, that means no motion. Okay, there's no motion in that because time is moving, but the distance is not. Okay, let me erase those. All right, 21. Write a speed calculation question. And this says, how fast is an airplane traveling if it moves 500 kilometers in two hours? Well, uh, distance divided by time, so 500 kilometers divided by two, which is the time, two hours, equals 250 kilometers per hour. All right, you can make up your own if you want. Uh, 22. What does the slope of the line in a speed graph tell you? Um, again, this I go over in the Just the Facts about graphing speed. And uh, if this confuses you, you can go back and watch that or just come and ask your teacher. Go ask your teacher. Um, this, but basically, the steeper the slope is rising, the faster the motion. Flat line means zero motion. So here, the person is not moving. Here, they're moving a little bit. Here, they're moving very fast. Okay, Because they're going a um, great deal of distance. Remember, distance is on the y-axis and time is on the x-axis. So not very much time has gone by but lots of distance has gone by. If it's just really gradual it means lots of time is going by but not much distance. Okay, So you can just kind of look at it without even looking at the numbers and kind of know. But you have to make sure to uh, get yourself acquainted with uh, the graph because it's different than looking at just a normal chart when you're looking at a, a motion graph. All right, uh, 23, well, we've already said this several times, but what does a horizontal straight line in a speed graph tell you? And it tells you that the object is not moving. Time is, oops, okay, forget that last, let me just erase that part. No. Time is moving, but again, I keep sloping up, didn't mean to do that, just trying to go straight across. So. Um, time is going, which means it's going this way, but distance is not going anywhere because distance is that way. All right, and the final question is, what equipment would you need to measure the speed of a runner and why? Well, I know this sounds silly, but think about it. It says a metric tape measure and a stopwatch. Um, and it says metric tape measure. That might be a meter stick. Some way to measure um, distance, right? Um, a ruler is going to take you a long time to measure, you know, all the way across a room or down a hallway. Um, so either a long tape measure or a meter stick and then top, uh, stopwatch. So you have to know distance divided by time. So the distance you're going to use the meter stick or the metric tape measure to, um, to measure. And then you have to know the time and you'll use the stopwatch. And it might be an actual stopwatch, which a lot of people don't use anymore or a stopwatch feature on your phone or the iPad or some other electronic device. That's what you would need so that you could measure um, the speed of a runner. You could get the distance and the time. Alright, I hope this prepares you for your test. I would give this study guide to somebody that is around you in your house and say, here, will you ask me these questions and see if I can answer them for you? That is always how I studied when I was growing up. I would read through everything myself um, and then hand it to somebody and ask them to quiz me. If no one was available, I would just kind of fold my paper over so that I could uh, see the questions and see if I could answer them on my own and check to see if I got the answers right. I know that you'll do great on the physics test and let your teacher know if you have any other questions.